I went on the Unique Summer School in 2019. In this video, I'm going to be talking about exactly what we did on the engineering course, and what better way to do this than by taking a dive into my unique memory box. My name is Sam, and this is Oxcentric. As a quick reminder, Unique is a scheme run by Oxford University that aims to give aspiring students from disadvantaged backgrounds a chance to experience life studying on an Oxford course for a week. The purpose of this video is to give you an idea of what this fantastic summer school is like, and hopefully convince you to consider applying if you're eligible. It is also an excuse for me to reminisce about better times of when I was allowed to do my studies in Oxford as opposed to at home. Hello darkness, my old friend. Finally, before anyone comments about it, Yes, I have gracelessly stolen the memory box format from Rosie Crawford's unique video, which you should absolutely go and watch if you want to hear a humanity student's perspective on their unique experience. With that out of the way, let's dive in. Right. So the first thing we have is the iconic Unique Lanyard. These lanyards are the primary means of identifying that you are a student on Unique. So when we got to the train station, we were told to have them on so that any student helpers could find us, and we were also recommended to wear them on the train so that we could find any other students who might be on the Unique program and have a bit of a chat to them before we got there. Also, they do come in many different colours, although you don't get to choose. So the next thing is another thing that I received in my initial letter from Unique, and that is the Unique Everything You Need to Know booklet. This little booklet is good as a very first introduction in terms of the logistics and giving you a general idea of what Unique is about, because not everyone really has a good idea before they apply. And the last thing I received in my initial communication from Unique was a bunch of forms. I mostly kept around because it's useful administration stuff, it's not really that exciting, but at the same time if I'd lost it I would have looked extremely stupid. I remember when I got this initial confirmation I was really excited, I think I hadn't rated my odds of getting onto Unique particularly high, my GCSEs were very good and my overall area has a pretty low access to higher education. That said, I thought my specific postcode would mean that I might be disadvantaged in terms of getting a place on Unique. However, in the end, I did get a place, and I'd say the moral of that story is if you do think you're borderline, like you might qualify for some of the eligibility, you might not qualify for some of it, definitely do apply. It is much better to give it a go and see what they say, rather than just not apply and never have the chance. The next thing I have is the last thing in the box that we were issued before we got to Oxford, and that is my unique BOD card. If you've never heard of it, a BOD card is short for a Bodleian Library card, and the Bodleian Library is a main library in Oxford. The BOD card starts off as just a library card, however nowadays it does an awful lot more than that. For example, I get in and out of my college using my BOD card, and I can also pay for food on it. On my unique experience, we didn't really end up spending any time in the libraries, mostly because we spent a lot of the academic time in the engineering department doing practicals. And yes, now I am an official Oxford student, I do have an upgraded BOD card compared to my unique one, and boy am I glad this one is less of a mugshot. So let's get on to the stuff that we actually had while we were there on Unique. The first thing we have is the Unique Notebook. So they break it up into different sections so you can potentially, if you want, write your notes about each section in the corresponding part. The only really neat thing I have in here is my solutions to the problem sheet that we got given and we were working on throughout the week. A lot of my notes is just scrawlings and relevant academic jottings, however on the first page I have goals which I wanted to achieve and they are absolutely peak. So, I had four goals. Number one, decide on which college, entirely respectable. Number two, perform well in academic sessions. Again, entirely valid. Number three, not be too sleep deprived. I love sleep. If I get less than eight hours, I will be horrible and grouchy. And number four, have meaningful social interactions. Well, of those goals, I'd say that I decided on which college. I did do that one. I performed pretty okay in the academic sessions. Good that. And somehow, I managed to avoid complete sleep deprivation. So, three out of four. Meaningful social interactions. Eh, okay, we'll call it three and a half. We'll call it three and a half. I'll be generous to myself. But three and a half out of four goals, pretty decent. I'll take that. So that's the first page. Then on the last page, I only have two really significant notes, and they are don't panic and worry less about answers than thoughts, 
which are both really solid pieces of advice to be taking into the Oxford application process as a whole. It's a lot more about how you think than whether you are capable of getting the right answer first time. The next thing we have here is the general unique timetable. So the main part of the day is the two three hour long academic sessions that we have in the morning and in the afternoon. So on the first night we had a big group dinner at St Catherine's College, which I would sum up as if you like brutalism, then boy oh boy, do I have a college for you. I stayed at Wadham College throughout the duration of Unique. Wadham is absolutely lovely, I really like it as a college. If I hadn't applied to Univ, Wadham would have been one that I strongly considered. Wadham is stereotypically quite a liberal college, and nowadays it's quite well known for having a very strong LGBTQ plus community. On my last night eating in Wadham College, we had a fantastic three course formal meal, which was probably one of my main highlights of Unique. I can't remember exactly what we got, but we had mozzarella and pesto as a starter, and it was just 10 out of 10. Honestly, the, the quickest way to my heart is through food, and I am not ashamed to admit that. The red stuff on the timetable is kind of the organised social events. The first thing was the No Limits Challenge, because No Limits was the theme of Unique that year. So the No Limits Challenge was basically a scavenger hunt. So you had to go around the city of Oxford and look for certain things, take pictures, of some things, make a little video, that kind of stuff. It primarily serves to get you familiar with the city, but it's also kind of a group bonding activity as well. Something like that is probably going to change every time Unique runs, but that's what we did on mine. The Oxford community event that we have marked down on here was basically a little societies fair, and then they talked to us a bit more about fees and funding, which is very much a useful thing that you do get a lot of information about on Unique. Sports in the park was the last organised thing we did, and that was at University Parks, which is just opposite the engineering department. Now, needless to say, I'm not really cut out for sports, physically or emotionally, so in that time I went and talked to one of the student helpers. I had a chat to them about my personal statements, and it was during that session that I learned the rubber duck tip, which I shared in my personal statements video. Basically my point is that the official timetable is not completely rigid, and there's some flexibility to do what you want. As well as that, the student ambassadors are always more than happy to help with your queries. The last bit of organised social we had was the unique party, which... I will let you all draw your own conclusions about how good of a party that is going to be. Now, one thing that they did get right is they left some board games out. Me and two of the other engineers were playing Scrabble, and then I managed to play the word zany for 72 points and absolutely annihilated them, and that is possibly the proudest I have ever been of my performance in a game. This is no relevance to my overall unique experience, I just thought you all needed to know that I played the word zany in Scrabble for 72 points. So that's the main timetable, and I hope that's filled you in on generally the kind of activities that you'll be doing on the course. So let's talk about the academic timetable. This is where it gets specific to engineering. On Engineering Unique, there's a small smattering of lectures, but it is overwhelmingly focused on the practical side of things. So the company visit is something quite unique to engineering. I think engineering is the only department that actually does that on Unique, but I might be wrong. I went to this Virador Energy Reclamation Centre, some other people went to Thames Water, and I think some people were going to a company that did something regarding nuclear fusion technologies. Which sounded incredibly interesting, and I am quite jealous of them. The last thing on the official academic timetable was tutorials, and like I mentioned that problem sheet earlier, this is what it was building towards. Now here is the actual problem sheet itself. This was about differential equations, which if you do further maths to A level standard, you will be pretty familiar with already. Overall, the problem sheets were designed to be relatively challenging, but still pretty manageable. If anything, I found the biggest problem was just finding the time to work on the problem sheet. I remember at one point I was trying to finish it off on the minibus on the way back from the company visit because there is so much going on in Unique. Your feet do not touch the ground, metaphorically. So the tutorial was pretty similar to how you do a real Oxford one, albeit quite a bit shorter. So mine was one academic and two other people, including myself, and we talked a bit through the problem sheet, discussed our solutions for about 15-20 minutes. Some people did get more substantial tutorials, I think I just got a little bit unlucky in not having much time. Tutorial style learning is something that Oxford is very unique for, and going on the unique program and having these mock tutorials can be very useful in terms of gauging whether Oxford is the place for you. I found I responded well to them, which very much reassured me that, yes, this is the right choice. Let's talk about the labs 
The first set of notes here I have is regarding the robotics lab. So the goal of this session was to write a piece of code that would help a Mindstorms Lego robot follow a line on the ground, and there were also little time trials to see whose robot could make it around the fastest. What I liked about this lab was how it was quite well aimed in terms of the skill level. If you had done coding before, you'd find it quite easy and could go onto some extension tasks. However, if you hadn't done coding before, it would still be something that you would be able to figure out. They also gave you instructions, so if you did get stuck, you could look at those or ask an instructor. So another thing we did was the beam building practical. Towards the start of the program, we had a session designing a beam and doing some Excel calculations for it. And then in this particular lab, you were meant to build one of your designs. So at the end of the lab, we tested our beams. So you put a load on it and then you would see whose beam did the best in terms of could it support the most load? How much did it deform? Those kind of things. Unfortunately, we did not make the best beam. However, it was distinctly average and I have no choice but to stand. I don't consider myself particularly talented regarding physical construction skills, so I was quite surprised when I found that I really enjoyed this lab. The last lab which I haven't really talked about up to this point is doing a bit of work on SolidWorks. SolidWorks is a piece of 3D modeling software that you do quite a bit of work with in the first year and later years of your degree here. I mentioned that in terms of lectures, not all of them were on the content that we were doing for the problem sheet. We had one about internal combustion engines, which was quite a bit more technically challenging than the rest, but it was still quite interesting. This is to give you a more applied and grounded view of the lectures, because the mathematical ones were relatively abstract. The point of Unique as a general rule is to give you a taste of the kind of stuff that you would be doing at Oxford, and I think the Unique Engineering course really does nail that. Unique engineering was kind of odd because I don't remember having an official interview session. We might have a talk about it, but we didn't have any mock interviews. Again, Oxford engineering interviews is something I've talked about at length already. Feel free to go check out those videos if you want to know more. And last but not least, we have an official Oxford engineering science brochure. That is the exact kind of thing you get on an open day. The unique version doesn't get you any more information. So the last thing I want to talk about as an official item is this. A very short introduction to engineering. At the front there's a little message saying this is a gift from Oxford University as a thank you for taking part in the unique summer school. The reason I value this a lot is because we got a little post-it note from one of our student helpers who had been sort of coordinating our group that week. So mine says, Sam, really clever guy, know you will do well. Aaron, I don't know if you're watching this, but I certainly got in. <laughs> I did actually own a copy of a very short introduction to engineering before I came to Oxford and got it for free. However, this one that I got is much more important since it has those notes in it. The last thing I want to say about Unique is it's a fantastic opportunity and especially don't overlook the social opportunities. One of the people that I did the Beam Practical with is now studying engineering at Oxford, albeit at a different college to me. Although, I don't know if she will remember how badly I defeated her in Scrabble with my 72 point zany. So I think that concludes the main things I want to talk about in Unique. It is a fantastic, action-packed program, and if you have the opportunity, I would completely, completely recommend it. This is just one person's experience. I did engineering, other people did different subjects. However, of the variety of people I've talked to who were on the program, everyone has been glowing and extremely positive about their experience. Do check out the Unique website if you want to know more about it, including when applications will reopen. In the meanwhile, keep studying, and I'll see you around. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. By the way, this is just a shoebox I slapped a post-it note on.